The 17th most followed person on TikTok in the world has been arrested for SA. Taewon Jung, or as he's known online, Ox Zung, with over 55 million followers just on TikTok alone, is the most followed non-celebrity in South Korea. You probably know him as Mama Boy because he ends a lot of his videos like this. <laughs> And his fans have been wondering where he has been because his last post hasn't been since the end of July. And it seems behind his wholesome and funny videos, behind these beady eyes, who this past May was just voted as one of Forbes 30 under 30, after a thorough investigation, Won Jung and another man have both been arrested for allegedly being a woman where they made her drink until she passed out and then transported her body back to the other guy's house where the two of them continued to her until she regained consciousness and then when she woke up she stated that she heard recording noises and then called the police. And then after the police arrived at the apartment, the two men refused to open the front door for the police to the point where the firefighters had to come and force the door open. And this man is so famous in South Korea that when South Korean media first started reporting on this story and keeping his identity anonymous for legal reasons, they just showed this blurred photo and these blurred videos and people were able to immediately guess that it was Ta Won Jung. The charges of illegal filming have already been dropped due to a lack Lack of evidence. And surprise, surprise, Ha Won Jung is claiming that the act was consensual, even though the woman was passed out and then immediately called the police as soon as she regained consciousness. The first trial is scheduled for January 17th, and if found guilty, Ha Won Jung is facing up to seven years in prison for being an unconscious victim. It's about time that she catches some charges. I implore all of you watching right now to research just what she did to her kids just so that she can make quote unquote entertaining content about her family. It really blows my mind that people are willing to go out of their way to abuse their children in order to make a little bit of money on the internet, in order to get some clout online. I swear is nothing sacred. By any means necessary, I shall become an internet celebrity. For whatever reason, that's the mentality of many, many people who create content on both YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, bro. Oh my God, would I call the cops. Oh, I would become the most annoying neighbor. In what universe is this reasonable? I get it, you're having a party. I get it, you're having some sort of massive get together. But there is no reason that you should be parking on the sidewalk. All right, if you can't find parking on the parking pad, then maybe, just maybe, you'll have to find another place in the neighborhood to put your car. It really kills me that people are so afraid of walking that they're willing to park on the sidewalk in front of somebody else's house. Hi everyone on Facebook. I was wanting to ask if anyone had a room to rent in downtown. I can pay rent and be a good roommate. I'm very quiet and respectful. If you guys have any suggestions and if you have a room to rent, please contact me. Thank you everyone. Contact you? What? <laughs> Didn't you stab someone? Like that was on the news. Hey, let's not judge too fast, am I right? Maybe he'll pinky promise not to stab you, all right? Maybe he had a reason to stab his last roommate. Who knows? Who knows? We don't know his story. We don't know what compelled him to stab somebody. What? This man's not a danger. I know a lot of my family members think I'm crazy for posting this, but hey, this is what I call peace. Driving a truck that you completely built yourself, just feeling nothing but adrenaline and peace and going through my mind, hearing a screaming VA, ah, you like speeding. I see. You like speeding in a truck that you built. I get it. You want to enjoy something that you put together yourself. But everybody on that road would really, really, really appreciate it if they could go home that day. Everybody on that road would really, really like it if you didn't go out of their way to risk their lives because you want to have some fun. If you want to race your truck, go to a track. You don't have to take the freeway in order to test out your engine. Atlanta attorney Shalitha Robertson has been found guilty in a $7 million PPP loan fraud case. She used the money to buy a Rolls Royce, a motorcycle, and a ring for a $150,000. Oh my god, it's Barbie pink. <laughs> Did she not think this was obvious? You would think an attorney would be a little bit more sneaky about this, all right? But apparently not. She not only chose to steal $7 million from the federal government, but then she bought the most loud looking luxury vehicle on the planet. She bought the one car that screamed, I'm a thief. Like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Now you're in prison and the rest of your family has to come up with the remaining amount of money to pay back the federal government. Isn't that fantastic? Not only did you mess up your family's finances, but you messed up your life as well. All for a Barbie pink Rolls Royce, a motorcycle, 
and a ring that is a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. What did you buy? Did you buy a Super Bowl ring? What what gems would you need to purchase? What metals did you use? Did you use like meteorite metal? What, what's going on? Oh yeah, I cannot wait until the first week of January because man, so many people are about to be outed for like crazy demonic behavior. And funny enough, the court order that was sent out to these people to have their names removed from all of the documents only excluded five people, I believe. Five people were successfully able to get their names off of all of these documents which makes me really, really curious about who those people are. I don't care anymore about the 170 people. We already know that they're monsters. Who are the five? Who could possibly have the influence, power, and prestige to get their names off of these documents? It really makes you think. And to be honest, everybody talking about this on Twitter kept guessing multiple different names, and a few names were repeated. Uh, I'm not gonna say the names here, but I wanna see what you guys think. Who do you think those five names were? because I'm pretty sure we're all thinking about the same people. Kick streamer Johnny Somali is facing a 200,000 yen fine and promised to quit streaming after Japanese court appearance. Dude, I implore all of you guys to search up what it's like to be in a Japanese prison, what it's like to be interviewed by a Japanese police officer inside of the police precinct. Like seriously, the best way I can describe the Japanese justice system is being arrested by Batman and then being interrogated by him and then immediately thrown into Arkham Asylum. That's exactly how it's like. And to be honest, Johnny Somali deserves every ounce of that treatment. 100%. Everybody not only despises him for his behavior in Japan, but they also despise him for ruining the reputations of other people who want to travel to Japan. We don't want the Japanese people to think that foreigners are just completely annoying, obnoxious, and just offensive. A lot of us would like to travel to that nation and just absorb the culture and enjoy Japan for what it is, with no intentions of going there to create some sort of offensive comedy that they can place on some bootlegged website like kick.com. And don't even get me started about that website. It's basically just green Twitch. I don't know, it's ridiculous. I don't understand why anybody would go on there to watch anything that's remotely entertaining. I haven't heard anything nice about that website, but I digress. Johnny Somali deserves way more than a 200,000 yen fine. He actually needs some jail time. So to encourage other people to not lose their minds and act a fool in some other person's nation. All right, can we just go to other nations and have fun? Not everything has to be some sort of attempt at some sort of ridiculous endeavor of getting popularity online. Not everything has to be streamed. Not everything has to be a joke. Sometimes you can just behave like a human. But for whatever reason, people like Johnny Somali exist. Man, it's so annoying. 13-year-old Muslim girl fights back tears after revealing she was forced to marry a 29-year-old man. Did you know what happens between a husband and wife after a wedding? Yes, the teacher taught me in sixth grade. I've actually seen this clip on the subreddit multiple times. I've never really included it in the video because it's really, really hard to listen to and also a very quick way to have the entire video taken down because for whatever reason, can't talk about real stuff on YouTube. It's incredibly awful and a serious problem in the Middle East, specifically in Pakistan and Afghanistan, man. It is really, really terrible. And the grown men who appear on these TV shows and talk in these interviews, they are completely bold about it. They're like, yeah, this is just what we do. I was married to her. We are going to wait until she's X age to be physical. It's incredibly deplorable and disturbing. And I wouldn't recommend anybody really watching the interviews unless you can truly handle it. But it gives you a good insight into what's going on across the world, man. And just how awful some nations can really be. And some cultures can really fucking be. Tinder has launched a $499 per month subscription plan. Man, sometimes I really wish I didn't have a moral compass, because I would be a billionaire. Imagine going out of your way to commodify, you know, relationships and attention and love like this. You're really going to charge somebody $500 a month? For what? Like seriously, what additional features can you offer somebody on a dating website? $500 a month isn't going to compel someone to date that person, but you're certainly going to take their money because this person is incredibly lonely and you're taking advantage of that. It's really, really terrible that almost all of these, you know, online dating websites found out in unison that they can make a lot of money from loneliness, that they can really capitalize on human suffering. And I just wish I was there in the beginning, man, because I would have money. But no, I was too busy being, you know, cursed with uh, principles and a moral compass and a heart. What's up, guys? Today we're in Walmart.
Miranda Cosgrove says she's never been drunk or smoked in her entire life. Wow, that's impressive. You know, I did see that interview. It was really, really interesting, you know, hearing her reasoning as to why she didn't want to, you know, indulge in those substances. And it was really great reading the comments. But then, of course, that interview was posted on Twitter. And Twitter is full of just goblins and, and ghouls and ghosts and nightmares. And all of them had nothing but evil things to say about Miranda Cosgrove. People in the quote teats are calling her a loser. Imagine not being able to have fun without drinking and smoking. Addiction man is crazy, and for whatever reason, the addicts are on Twitter, and they're unabashed about their, you know, bullying of people who don't want to participate in their inane behavior. It makes no sense. Now, I'm not trying to step on people who are going through something, but let's be honest. You should be able to have fun without a lot of stuff. You should be able to have fun and drink water and be okay. You shouldn't have to, you know, rely upon certain things in order to have a good time. But for whatever reason, if you are a sober person, stay off of Twitter, because you're going to be bullied for that. It really just kills me every day that Elon Musk bought this website, man. Like, what did he see? What did he want from all of this? Who in their right mind would want to own such a terrible thing? JP Morgan is in a fight over its client's lost $50 million fortune. The bank claims it was acting on an investor's wishes to take risks. His family and doctors say he was slipping into dementia. You heard right, audience. This man trusted JP Morgan with $50 million because he had dementia and did not have the ability to make investments on his own. Now, you see, JP Morgan was a little bit worried. The type of investments that he wanted to make were investments that were high risk, and he needed to give them the ability to do that on his behalf. But the dude had dementia and probably did not know what he was signing. And once he did sign that paper, all of a sudden, his $50 million was gone, and JP Morgan is arguing that they're not accountable for that loss, even though the person that they're working with had dementia and probably did not know what they were signing. Now this couple lost their entire retirement and have no means of making money because they're both old and have been out of the workforce for like a decade. So yeah, be careful with your money, guys. Don't trust anyone, not even corporations that are 100 years old and have proven time and time again that they can make good investments. We've had thieves here, and you're a thief? Excuse me, don't touch me. No. Don't touch me. Excuse me. Let me. Excuse me, please don't touch me. Don't really touch me. me. If you could. Literally Bye. touching me. Okay, call yeah, do that, please, because she harassed me. Thank you. Please call security. Call on you. On you. Thank you. Please call security. You don't call on you. Excuse me. Excuse me. You are. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. You're. Excuse me. You're. She's attacking me. Please call She's security. She's attacking me. <laughs> She's attacking me. Please call security. I'm calling you Excuse me, ma'am. Stop here. Excuse me, ma'am. Stop here. Excuse me. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me. Amazon. Do that, please. Oh, please, please. <laughs> this story was something else, man. Fired for his act of love in a world full of hate and anger, displays of love are seen as rebellious. We shouldn't bend toward a party that instructs and hates. We must do the opposite. Is whew, This is such a funny way of saying, hey, don't be mad that someone had anger in the Senate conference room. You heard right, everybody. Two sexual degenerates thought it would be a great idea to film and then post on Instagram and on WhatsApp their little uh, escapades inside of the U.S. Senate. You heard right, right on Amy Klobuchar's chair. Mm, I hope they burnt that thing. For 48 hours on Twitter, people were sharing the most gross video imaginable of two dudes, two male staffers, going at it because they were a part of a WhatsApp chat that talked about fantasies concerning having <laughs> specifically gay <laughs> in uh, the Capitol building. <laughs> it's about as ridiculous as you think, and the reaction was fantastic seeing a bunch of twitter randoms and you know articles coming out in defense of these guys was insanely nuts no pun intended and funny at the same time i just feel sorry for amy klobuchar because that was her table 
in her chair, and these two wonderful upstanding civilians did not care about contaminating her seat and her chair while getting up to their weird degenerate fetish. Ugh, like I really hope they threw that chair into a volcano. Bill would require Chick-fil-A to open on Sundays at New York rest stops and locations. This has been a very controversial story and a lot of people are upset because the reason why Chick-fil-A is closed on Sunday isn't because they want to have a weekend off, but it's because it's a Christian company and you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. And to compel a company to be open on a day that they don't want to be, especially if that reason is uh, religious, not secular, is very, very bad and incredibly, incredibly disagreeable, at least in the United States. The state government's argument being that any corporation that is feeding like millions of people at a time should be available seven days a week, especially if your food is seen as affordable so that people who don't have a lot of money can have access to food. My re you know, response to that is eat somewhere else. You don't have to eat at Chick-fil-A. Why does Chick-fil-A have to be open on Sunday when they don't want to be? It absolutely makes no sense, and many people believe it to be a violation of their rights and privacy to compel them to be open on a day that violates their religious beliefs. It makes no sense and something that a lot of people disagree with. But this, you know, story is a bit contentious. I want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Should Chick-fil-A be compelled to be open on Sunday, even if it violates their own religious beliefs and their own policies? Let me know in the comments down below. I really want to see what you guys think, because this story has been big, at least in the United States, and definitely on Twitter. Bruh, we euthanize dogs and pets for having disabilities. Why don't we do the same for human beings? You are insane. I hope this is a bad joke. Stay home. Don't be a nuisance to society. Uh-oh, I didn't think we would have the useless eater conversation in 2023. It should be very obvious why we don't do that, but maybe this person is like a certifiable teenager and just wants to be edgy on TikTok. I really hope this isn't an adult because it, it's very obvious why we don't go around euthanizing people who are mentally ill or disabled. They're allowed to be alive too. Their lives and livelihoods are valuable as well, regardless of the disabilities that they have. It's really, really funny that we're having this conversation in present day, you know, in present year. <laughs> I know that's a cliche, but like, come on. These questions have already been answered, guys. We know why it's wrong. Losing a student is never easy for a building principal. Still smiling, still standing, still leading, still teaching, learning, and growing. Hashtag justice strong. A student died of a drug overdose, specifically fentanyl, and this is what the principal had to say about it. She made an entire tragedy about herself. She really stood in front of a camera, bald, shiny skull, shiny scalp, bald, and made this caption and had this to say, are you serious? How do you keep your job after that? How do you do that in any capacity? How do you feel good about standing there and making this incredible tragedy all about yourself still teaching still learning and still growing doubt it if i was the parent to this child i would get really violent i would get really really stupid really really fast man this bald-headed woman would see nothing but knuckles for this absolutely ridiculous twitter post she would receive nothing but hands oh my god everybody trigger warning disturbing rant my cat snow who was vegan her entire life ate my hamster while i wasn't home as a cat lover, I'm devastated. I don't think I'll ever own a cat again. On my way to the vet right now to have her euthanized, and I'm bawling my eyes out. It hurts. Goodbye, Snow. Only Snow is getting euthanized? Only the cat? You sure it's not a, you know, two for one situation? Cause you should probably get a taste of that injection too. I mean, if you're gonna go out of your way to kill a cat for eating a rodent, uh, maybe we should just kill you for existing, you know, for breathing. You shouldn't be breathing air. You shouldn't be doing anything that comes naturally because you're an absolutely terrible person. In all seriousness, what I have to say isn't even scratching the surface. This tweet blew up. The amount of quote tweets were immense. The verbal beatdown was catastrophic. This person, I don't know if they still have an account on Twitter, but they really should delete it because every day there's just a new epithet a new curse word, a new name, just everything awful under the sun. Because at the least, people are upset for a bad joke if this is not real, and at the most, people are incensed that you went out of your way to kill a cat for doing something natural. 
Harvard is named worst school for free speech, scoring zero out of possible 100. And there you have it, everybody, the best school in the United States. You know, people used to go to university in order to talk about things that are difficult, that are taboo, that are not socially acceptable, because that's the place for those things to be said, for those things to be discussed, and now, you actually just can't teach or talk about anything that's not, you know, signed off by school administrators because they know better. Like seriously, if you want to know how bad things have gotten, search up Harvard President Anti-Semitism on YouTube and watch the conference that not only the Harvard President but the UPenn President and the MIT President had with many politicians in the United States about allowing certain statements to be said on their campuses. It's incredibly deplorable and worth sharing with others just so people can understand how bad things have gotten here. What's up everyone, it's your boy Aileris, aka Panda Daddy, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, let me know in the comments down below, and leave a like if you liked the video. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe fam. What you doing watching videos and not subscribing? And if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so you get these notifications every time. I know you guys have been waiting a very long time for content, and that's because I've been focusing on a ton of more reality content that I wanted to publish before the end of the year. And all of that content was age restricted, so I wanted to make sure that it won't happen again. I kept uploading the videos, and they kept, you know, just being slapped in the algorithm. So I've been able to retool them in a way so that everyone of all ages can enjoy some of the best content on the channel. And it seems like my endeavors have been successful, so I hope you guys enjoy the videos. And as always, I gotta thank the Patreon supporters that make content like this possible. A big thank you to Tariq, D, The Blurred Star, Mr. Sandman, Sleepy Dragon, Power Lover, Loving Tate, Tron Destroy 23, Co Connor Purvis, S16, My Golden Experience, James Tucker, BMX30, Cinnamon Sticks, Scott, The Fake Musician, Buckethead, Samantha Bellhart, Admin Fanaker, Bloody Hunter, Keeley, Dundernass Hawk, Swiss Patreon user, and Noah, thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. If you want to help support the channel, there's two links in the description, one of my merch store and one of my Patreon. Both funds go directly into the channel so we can maintain what's happening here. And as always, stay zesty.